Okay, our next topic that we're going to be discussing is adult immunizations, okay? And the most important ones for the exam I'm going over right here. We're going to start off with our DPT, diphtheria, and tetanus toxin. All adults should be immunized against DPT, diphtheria, and tetanus every 10 years. Basic series in childhood. Previously immunized patients, you're going to um, give them a booster dose every 10 years. So adults that have never received the vaccine, they're going to get three doses. Dose one and two are going to be given two months apart. And the third dose is going to be given six to 12 months later. And you're going to give a booster every 10 years for life. So basically, um, on the exam, this could present as an immigrant um, who comes in with the gray pharyngeal exudates presenting like C. diphtheria or um, you know something, something having to do with an immigrant. And this is when you're going to know when you're going to need to know the vaccination schedule for unvaccinated diphtheria and tetanus. Next is going to be influenza vaccine. Basically, this is going to be recommended for all healthy adults over the age of 50. It's going to be recommended in individuals of any age with chronic debilitating illnesses such as cardiovascular, renal, or pulmonary disorders, um, diabetes, cystic fibrosis, residents of long-term care facilities, adults in contact with kids aged 0 to 59 months, all these patients you have to give an annual vaccine. Um, you want to make sure that you know pregnant women in their second or third trimester during the influenza season also should receive the vaccination. Other high-risk individuals such as physicians, nurses, employees of nursing homes, family members of patients infected with influenza, all these patients should also get an annual influenza vaccine. And it's not indicated in children under the age of six months. Next, we're talking about pneumococcal vaccine. This is going to be recommended for all healthy adults over the age of 65, and these patients are actually going to need a booster shot in five years as well. Pneumococcal is also going to be indicated in individuals with chronic debilitating diseases such as chronic cardiovascular, pulmonary, liver, and renal diseases. You're going to want to give it to patients um, who are alcoholics, chronic alcoholics, Patients with cirrhosis should get the vaccine regardless of the age. Um, patients with splenectomy or sickle cell disease. You want to revaccinate any patient who had the original vaccine before the age of 65. And immunocompromised patients are going to get revaccinated every five years. So remember that every uh, adults over the age of 65 are going to need a booster every five years. And immunocompromised patients are going to need revaccination every five years. Next topic is hepatitis B, and this is going to be a big one, okay? So with hepatitis B, first you're going to know exposure is going to happen via contraction with blood, sex, or needles. And if someone's exposed to hepatitis B virus and has a documented response to the hepatitis B vaccination, at this point, they're, gonna, they're not going to need anything else but reassurance. So if they've been exposed to hepatitis B virus and they've had a documented response to the vaccine, they don't need anything other than reassurance, okay? Um, patients with a history of homosexuality, frequent exposure to blood products, IV drug abuse, sexual contact with hepatitis B carriers, as well as liver disease are going to need the hepatitis B vaccine. Now, if someone's exposed to hepatitis B virus and is not vaccinated previously, what you want to do is you want to give them hepatitis B immunoglobulin within 24 hours, and then you should start the vaccination. So the different scenarios are going to say, um, like I said before, if someone's exposed and they've had a documented response, you don't need anything else but other than reassurance. If um, someone's been vaccinated but there's no documentation of the response, you have to give a second course of the vaccination unless they show a positive anti-hepatitis B surface antigen at the time of the exposure. If someone is a, non a non-responder to previous vaccinations, they should be given hepatitis B immunoglobulin upon exposure to hepatitis B virus. And as I said, when someone's exposed to the virus and they haven't been vaccinated, you got to give them hepatitis B immunoglobulin within 24 hours and you have to start vaccination against hepatitis B virus. 
So hepatitis B is a pretty important one, and those are pretty much the scenarios that you have to know those. Um, hepatitis A is actually going to be the most common vaccine preventable disease among travelers. The risk of getting this disease is actually reasonably high while traveling to developing countries, and it usually depends upon the length of stay. And basically, the mortality increases as you increase in age, and it can reach the mortality can reach up to three percent in adults over fifty-five. So basically, what you want to do, hepatitis A, how is it contracted via the fecal oral route? Anyone in daycare centers are frequent travelers. So um, the recommended vaccines are for daycare workers, homosexual patients, and those with chronic liver disease. When we're talking about travelers, travelers within four weeks of travel, we have to give them serum immunoglobulin, which is going to be like a passive immunity that's going to provide protection for four to six months. So if it's within four weeks, you're going to give them serum immunoglobulin. And if the travel is going to occur more than four weeks later, we're going to give them hepatitis A vaccine. And basically, this is going to be an active immunity, but it's going to take about four weeks to take effect. So if the travel is going to be in over four weeks, they say, Doc, I'm coming to you and I, um, I'm going to go to a high-risk zone, uh, such as Asian and African countries, you know, in two months, then you can give them hepatitis A vaccine, which is an active use uh, vaccine. But if they're leaving in under four weeks and they say, Doc, I am leaving in two weeks, this is when you're going to give them the immunoglobulin, which is only a passive vaccine. A booster shot is going to be given after the initial shot, and this is going to confer immunity for 10 years. Um, our next topic is going to be MMR. MMR is included in the childhood vaccination schedule, and in adults, it's going to be a single dose that's given if the patient hasn't been immunized and was born after the year 1957. Now, the common concept tested is if they're HIV, if they're HIV positive and they're symptomatic, no vaccine. But if they're HIV positive and asymptomatic, they can get the vaccine. So here, remember this one right here. If they're HIV positive and asymptomatic, they can get the vaccine. If the patient is pregnant or immunocompromised, no vaccine. And remember, this is going to be safe in egg allergies since the allergy is actually to the gelatin content, content when we're talking about the MMR vaccine. Um, varicella vaccine. Varicella is going to be a live attenuated vaccine and it's going to be recommended for use in all adults who lack a history of childhood infection with the varicella virus. Um, since it's a live attenuated vaccine, you don't want to give it to immunocompromised patients and HIV patients when they're symptomatic or HIV patients with a CD4 less than 200, they do not get it. Um, you also want to avoid giving this to pregnant patients and immunocompromised patients. So this pretty much hits upon all the important facts that you need to know about adult vaccines.